When Cyberpunk 2077 got delayed to December 10th, I made a video about how that was the same day the Medium was going to get released, and I put my thoughts out there that the Medium should really shift its release date away from the same day. When the Medium got banned in Australia, I made a second video saying the same thing. And the news today is that has actually happened. The Medium will no longer be released on December 12, but has instead been shifted to January 28th, 2021. Bloober Team's announcement highlighted COVID-19 in Poland being a factor in their decision, but also the current schedule of other games, which of course must refer to Cyberpunk 2077. I feel sorry for them that Cyberpunk stole their thunder, but at the same time, they are saying the extra time will enable them to improve the game with further polish, so all in all, while this isn't great news for the game release schedule for the Xbox Series X, I do think releasing the medium in January is still a good move for Bloober Team. Releasing Marvel's Avengers, however, was maybe not such a good move for Square Enix, at least it wasn't in the state it was released in. Square Enix's second quarter of 2020 financial report is out, and it's not a good picture. They reportedly lost $63 million over those last few months, a chunk of which can be directly attributed to Marvel's Avengers not doing so well. Square Enix haven't released the sales metrics for Marvel's Avengers, but industry experts have guessed it only sold about 3 million copies. That's based on the idea that Avengers sold 60% of what they'd expected and what they'd expected was 5 million in sales. That's across all platforms too. Now the game is thought to have cost more than 100 million to make and it certainly lost way more than $63 million in anticipated sales. It might even be worse than that too since Square Enix's overall loss was propped up by an increase in sales of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. So yeah, Marvel's Avengers isn't supremely popular with most users right now or with Square Enix shareholders either. And while we're talking Marvel's Avengers, check this out. Here's a speed test put up by Kinda Funny Games. It shows Marvel's Avengers loading into the harm room on a PS4 Pro, a PS5, and an Xbox Series X. The winner is Xbox Series X. Just remember though, that's for now. The next gen release of Avengers is a while away yet, so the game hasn't been fully optimized either for the PS5 or the Xbox Series X. So yeah, the Xbox Series X is winning for now, but the final results are really yet to come in. Another area Xbox is beating out the PS5 is with storage. We already know the Xbox Series X can store games on an external SSD. Not so for the PS5 though, according to Sony, you can only store PS4 games on a PS5's external SSD. This is another aspect of the PS5 I find truly baffling. The internal PS5 SSD is really tiny, it's only 667 gig of free space. With the size of next gen games, that's pretty small. We're going to be juggling games on the PS5 like crazy. I'm really surprised this wasn't a huge factor that influenced the early design of the machine. I mean, it clearly was for the Xbox. It's possible this might change, sure. I mean, who knows? Maybe that's one of the reasons why Sony's SSD expansion won't be available at launch. Maybe this is something they're looking into as we speak. You'd hope so, otherwise the future of PS5 gaming will pretty much be one of constantly deleting games to make space. Anyway, that's all the news I have to share with you for today. I hope this has been informative. I hope you liked it. If so, give it a like and have a good day. Bye for now.